Hey guys, welcome to the Gagno Atelier. I'm your old pal, Tim Gagno, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, a little bit fun. We are gonna be doing some end plein air painting right here at my house, and uh, we're gonna have a good time today, so I'm glad you can join us. Uh, we're just gonna, just gonna paint today. We're gonna have fun, so I'm gonna come around here, and I'm gonna talk to you about what we're doing. As you can see, we have got my house here. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in here. We're gonna paint this part of the house right there um, my wife's really uh, proud of her little um I think well, those things are called jasmine something or other um, yeah I don't know what they're called star jasmine that's what it is a star jasmine These things uh, for a while trying to get them to grow and train those vines to go around that archway and so um, I'm gonna try to paint that and I think that'll be fun As you can see right here I've got my kit set up zoom in here so you guys can see it uh, I've got my little plein air kit here that I've made um, it's basically it looks like a cigar box but it's actually not uh, what it is is it is a uh, it's on a tripod and it is actually two pieces of um, wood panels that I've bolted together and so with a hinge and all that so I can put it on a tripod and paint anywhere I want so we're pretty excited about that so I'm gonna paint the star jasmine archway of the house today so that's what we're going for right about there like that and I'm so glad you're joining me um, on Facebook as, as well as our YouTube channel so if you could do me a favor and you, if you could uh, like the Gagno Atelier page on Facebook and sign up to follow it and then also go over to the Gagno Atelier YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, that would also be a great thing that would help me out a lot. So with that said, I am gonna start here painting here. So I'm gonna get my little water cups here and I'm gonna fill them up. And I am painting with gouache, which is an opaque watercolor. I uh, picked that up from one of my art heroes, which is James Gurney. If you ever want to see some awesome plein air painting, uh, he is the absolute uh, plein air painting legend, if you ask me, in my book. But um, he, um, he kind of has a very, very similar kit. And normally I paint out of a watercolor book, like a little... A uh, very small little book that you can travel anywhere and paint with it. But the layout of this particular um, painting that I'm doing, it's a little, it's a little too tall. And so on, on my watercolor book, um, it's kind of, um, it's almost like a movie screen. So it's very long and uh, this painting is going to be a little taller. So I wanted to to get a bigger, I got a bigger watercolor piece of paper here. I have gouache here in the paint tray, got my brushes, and so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I start off by just kind of getting a basic sketch of our little layout here, and uh, yes, yeah, so let's get started. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. The first marks are always the scariest. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of get some measurements. If I look like that, I'm just kind of getting length of what I want. May even lower this a little bit, but I think we're good. I want the main part of the composition to be the the archway. So that's kind of what I'm measuring. I want to see how tall it is. Okay, that kind of tells me how tall everything is and the angles. I use my pencil. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Um, I use my pencil and I turn it like this, and I'm getting the angle for the perspective correct. Like I know the pillars are straight up and down, but what is the angle of the um, the top beam of that uh, that post and lintel? So uh, the lintel part, which is the little beam that goes across the top, what is the angle of that? That'll also help me on the perspective of the um, the wood and the bricks and everything else. So that's going to be my main thing that I'm going to set up for that. And all I do is I hold my hand out like this. And then I bring it down to the paper, and that gives me a way to 
Like I know roughly, it's hard for you to see what I just did, but I drew a line here, but what I did is I brought the pencil down at that angle, just brought it down and boom, there's my angle. That's a helicopter overhead. He wants to be want, want, watch us paint. It's probably like, what's that crazy Frenchman doing up there? Down there. <laughs> All right, so I'm drawing a line here. And then I'm gonna measure how far, how long that is, and I'm gonna compare it to the leg. So that's there. So the leg is actually a little taller. I'm gonna come down here. I'm actually gonna bring this up just a little bit. Because I want the main piece of the comp composition to be the jasmine, not, not the roof, not anything like that, so. I may even bring it up just a little bit higher and then that roof's gonna come down. Very loose strokes, nothing fancy here. Um, all I'm trying to do is get a basic drawing of this house, the roof line, things like that. I'm not getting fancy at this point. We all like, what is that guy doing now? It's kind of funny, the car's at the shop today, which is why we're not planning at a different plein air painting at a different location, because my Jeep is in, is in the uh, shop, the AC went on the fritz, so I'm getting the, my AC fixed, and then um, one of the things, um, I gave them all my keys on my keychain, because I didn't think it would take two days to get my air conditioning fixed, but apparently it does, and so I'm sitting here at my, um, at my house painting because we couldn't leave the house. Um, and But at the same time, this is great, great, great uh, point, I guess that we can make with this whole thing is um, when, you're, when you're painting, who says that you have to, um, you know, everybody's like, oh, I need a special place to paint. I need a, I need, uh, a place, you know, I need to go somewhere. I need to make a big to-do. No, you don't. Just go in front of your house in your front yard. Here I am in my, I'm literally in the front yard in the middle of practically the, the street and I'm painting the front end of my house, the, 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 the door of my house. I could go to the backyard and paint uh, one of the trees in the backyard or, you know, I've got a bird cage, um, not a bird cage, a little bird feeder right across. I could paint that, you know. Um, there's nothing that you can't do. I mean, I could turn the camera around and I could paint the street. The, there's a stop sign right there next to the house. I could, there's never, when you say, oh, I don't know what to paint, I don't, look around. It's everywhere, everywhere you can, anywhere you can think to paint, there's something to paint. So, that's the way I look at it. And there's fire ants chewing on my ankles. Ouch. All right. <laughs> Not too much going on right now, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen fast, I promise you, once we get the colors in. What's cool about this uh, here is that it's gonna be, um, I don't know, maybe we'll hang it up in the kitchen or something, you know, when it's done. Just kind of getting a layout. Basic, basic, basic layout of what, what it is that I want. My wife warned me. She said, watch out for the bugs. They're going to tear you up. Once again, the wife is right. You guys can probably kind of see what's happening now. There's a beam right there. All that's going to do is that's going to give me um, my basic perspective from here because then if I look the front door of the house 
is coming from there and it comes at an angle like that. And then the wall, the beams go this way. There's a little sign, you can't really see it. You might be able to see it. Let me, um, whoops, oh my goodness, shame on me. You guys are probably like, what an amateur videographer this guy is. All right, so if we look right there, we can see the perspective on the door, and that's really what I'm working on here, is that. So I'm changing the perspective of the door and then the wall. So the wall is a little bit different. It's more straight across. And there's a sign, there's a beam right here. And then I've got a sign there, uh, and it's actually, uh, it's from the wedding. Uh, my wife and I got married about six years ago. Yeah, we're still newlyweds. There's a sign right there, and it says, Shoes here, love there. And that's because we were on, um, we got married on the beach. And so we were like, needed a sign to say people where to put their shoes. Because we got, we got married in the sand. We had sand on our toes when we got married. Um, there we go. That'll work perfect. All right. That's a little bit too big, actually. So I need to... Now, the cool thing about gouache that I really like is gouache is opaque. So I really... You see me erasing here? I really don't even need to do that. I can just paint right over it. Again, I'm just kind of laying things out. There's a, there's a bush here. And then there is... Let's see if I can raise this up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. And then there is a... Bushes and flowers here. Window here. All right, and then the door is actually right There we go. Now that doesn't look like much, but it's actually, there's quite a lot going on here. Um, so now it's time to paint. I've got my initial sketch in, and so now uh, we are going to paint. So I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to put that away, and we're going to break out the, the paints, and we are going to start making a mess here. Because that's really, you know, the fun of painting is making a bit of a mess. So I've got, I've got some big brushes here. Um, actually, I could use even bigger brushes than this, but these were the ones that I had handy in my plein air kit. And so I'm going to do a real quick wash of color. And uh, some some artists will do, um, they'll do an underpainting first. I'm not going to do that just because time restraints. And so I'm going to lay in some color. I'm going to put some water in my little paint tray here. And I'm going to start uh, just laying in some of this gray from the house. It's like a bluish gray. So I'm going to mix some, I actually got some, uh, some Payne's gray. And I'm going to take a little bit of Cerulean blue just to make it even cooler. A little bit of white. And I'm going to put this on really, really, really uh, watered down because um, I want to almost create a wash for my for my backgrounds here. And I'm just going to lay that in.
And even though this is going to be brick, I'm going to kind of just to help me lay it, everything out so I can find what I'm doing. I'm going to put that in there. Inside the house not the inside of the house just the inside of that it's like a little um, I don't know what you'd call it uh, little porch for your area kind of thing when you first uh, walk in like you step in and then you can go either to the uh, the art studio is on one side and then the um, the house is on the other so the door that you see is to the that will lead you into the house Whereas the, um, where you see the brick wall here, you see the brick wall, uh, that will actually lead you into the atelier, into the, into the studio. So I'm laying in this transparent so that I can, and that's really cool. What's, what's great about um, uh, gouache is that it, it can act like a, um, like a watercolor. It can do pretty much everything that a watercolor can do, but it can also be put on opaque. So it's really, really great. I just absolutely love it, um, you know, what, what it's capable of doing. So now I'm going to start to lay in some browns for those bricks. Again, I'm just laying it in very, very, very translucently. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me see if I can hold my hat. There you go. You can kind of see what I'm doing now a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. I hold it like that. You guys see that? There we go. As I add color, it'll be easier to see. So this is that brick wall area here. So I'm just going to throw that in. So this is not a time-lapse video. This is a watch it happen as it happens video, which is kind of fun, I think. You can see here I'm adding that, that, that uh, the brown for the bricks. Here on this side, a little more over here, I did it more like a wash. So you can see the, see the difference here. Using my hat. I'm using my hat as a, as a shield. I got this gigantic hat on today, so we got new hats at Walmart. <laughs> got to have some beach hats. Can't have you can't you can't live in Panama City Beach and not have a beach hat. It's just kind of the way it goes. And I'm gonna grab some uh, some of this some of this black and just kind of just laying in at this stage. Nothing nothing too fancy. I'm gonna lay in just lay in that ceiling here. Now we have got some great stuff coming up on the Modern Masters podcast that I think you guys are going to really, really enjoy. Um, we've got some great guests coming up. Um, in two weeks, we have uh, Joyful Enrique is going to be coming on the show. I'm super excited about her, Panama City, um, but she is just exploding uh, right now and I'm so proud of her she is just you're gonna love her to death she is quite quite the peach and um, she does um, aquatic art like sea life and fish and sea turtles and jellyfish and things like that and it's just it's gorgeous it's absolutely gorgeous you are gonna love her work I mean she is uh, just such a phenomenal artist uh, when you see her work you are going to get just blown away by what you see. I'm very excited to have her on the show. Um, she, like I said, when I say she's exploding, she is really just blowing it up. Uh, she is on a rocket ship. And uh, so, yeah, we've got her coming on. Uh, I have um, lined up some incredible artists. Uh, and then in October, um, 
we got some really cool things happening. We are going to be actually um, broadcasting the show live from Gulf Coast State College in their Encore program. Um, this podcast actually started by doing a class uh, there at Gulf Coast, and uh, we um, just after after the uh, the semester ended, everyone was like, "Oh, you're going to keep doing the show," and so I said, "Well, you know, why not? I'll do it." And so I started doing the Modern Masters podcast that way. But the, um, yeah, the, um, we're going to be going back. Their, their Encore program kicks back in, in um, actually the end of September, the, the last weekend in September, and then all through October, the whole month of October. And so we're going to be bringing in our, our normal guests, but we'll, we will have a live audience in the background. So that'll be wicked cool. I'm really excited about that. That's going to be, that's going to be a true, no joke, super fun. Uh, thing and so hopefully you guys will be able to tune in and uh, watch it uh, of course the the students that are there are going to get to actually be there live and uh, really uh, I think they're gonna have a great time they're gonna ask some questions so it's, it's always a blast always always a blast uh, at the Encore program um, and that's at Gulf Coast State College so if you guys are anywhere in the Florida Panhandle um, you can take classes uh, virtually as well as on site. Uh, the college is totally safe. Uh, I know that because I'm also an adjunct professor there, and so they have um, they've got classes. I mean, going on right now. I'm teaching classes there, and trust me, the college is probably one of the safer bets for you if you are um, if you're looking for uh, something to do. You're looking for um, you know some classes and things like that you want to take you want to learn encore is great because what it does um, they offer like I mean my god they offer so many different kinds of classes you wouldn't believe uh, cla you could take everything from a history class to a math class to a class on taxes uh, retirement funds uh, those sound to me really boring but uh, you know that they're, they're important classes you can take class like that you can take um, you can take um, art classes you can take uh, yoga classes I mean, you name it, they have a class for it. It's really, truly amazing. Um, and you can check that out by going over to uh, gulfcoast.edu or just, just do a search, Google search on um, Gulf Coast State College Encore program and uh, you would be able to uh, check that out. So now I'm just laying in some bricks and uh, doing different things. Really, at this point, I'm kind of just kind of getting my thoughts together on how I'm going to actually do this. Again, I'm doing this in layers. A lot of translucent, transparent layers, just to kind of get a gauge. I've got everything laid out. I know where the door is, those sorts of things. And so now I'm going to start bringing in uh, some colors. That that door is a, is a different shade of white. It's more of a creamy white. So I'm going to I'm going to get some of my yellow and some white, and I'm just going to make like a cool. A cool yellow and I'm gonna add just a touch of the gray to it just to tone it down just a little bit sometimes you want to exaggerate colors so that they so that they pop that's a little too bright so I'm gonna add a little bit more um, it's too sunshiny I need to tone it down add a little more gray to it oh today man there it is boom it is so great when you nail the color that I'm looking for. Woohoo! Hanging out with your old pal Tim and painting. We are painting, so there is nothing more fun than painting. Well, there's a few things more fun than painting, but we won't we won't get into that. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go back into that grayish blue color. I'm just going to darken. I want to darken where the inside of this the, this area in here, right in right in this area, um, it's darker than the outside of the house. So We're using my Mevo camera to broadcast today. Uh, we're broadcasting uh, straight to Facebook as well as YouTube channel. So I don't know. Sometimes it gets glitchy. So let me know in the comments if it was. 
Um, I would hate for it too, but you never know. These things happen sometimes, so. The Mevo is supposed to be able to broadcast, you know, straight in there, but sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men don't always work out. You can see here what I'm trying to get is you see how much darker it is inside the nook and so that's that's kind of what I'm going for there just trying to get that darker area to look to look right now I'm going to mix in some um, some colors here to do that wood there wood sign in there I'm going to start by just making it blocky because it is a little blocky at first and then there's pieces that stick out of it. Ooh, welcome to Florida. It's hot. I love living in Florida, but it is going to be a scorcher today. All right, so again, I'll take my hat so you guys can kind of hopefully see a little better. There you go. We're getting there. It's starting to look like something anyway. It's very basic at this point. There's nothing too fancy. Um, clean, my, clean my brush here. Again, I'm just doing a quick, well, I'll say quick. It doesn't feel like it's that quick, but uh, I'm doing a quick layout here. Just kind of laying everything out where I need it to go. There's some brickwork here. There's a post right here. And it's funny because a lot of this stuff's going to get covered up by plants eventually, you know. But uh, right now, right now we've got to lay these things out. Just, just kind of find everything. I'm really looking to find, you know, make sure that I'm not vital. There we go. I've got a little. Um, There's a drain right there, a little gutter rather. That's what it's called. I know what things are. Bada bing, bada boom. My wife's got all these rocks in here, little like river rocks for the drainage. So I'm just gonna put, I'm just throwing color in at this point. Just kind of throwing it in there. So I know what I want This, these, these are little color blocks that are going to inform my decisions later on as I start to throw in and bring in the detail. So this is like almost like an underpainting uh, for everything that I'm doing. Um, there's a brass plate at the bottom of the door right here. So I'll paint that in there. Neighborhood's getting uh, starting to wake up. Neighbors are working on washing their cars across the street. The Waffle Queen, who lives down the street, uh, she's actually called the Waffle Queen. She is a uh, a fitness guru, uh, and she makes these the fancy um, waffles and different treats that you know it's uh, they're super healthy like workout food, but it's uh, they're yummy <laughs> and delicious. So she's called the Waffle Queen because she makes waffles that are actually, like if you're really, really uh, quite the health nut or you work out a lot, uh, they are uh, waffles that you can enjoy. So that's kind of cool. All right, guys, we're going to come in here again. I'm going to zoom in. 
Let me open this up just a little bit. Man, this, the, the, this program is so cool. We have been 30 minutes here. Thank you guys for watching uh, with me. I appreciate it. We are painting my house, if you're just tuning in. Um, this is actually the front door of my house. And so um, here in Panama City Beach, Florida, the world's most beautiful beaches. And I don't say that lightly. I have been to many other beaches and I always go, meh. <laughs> Now, where you live, you may say, hey, man, my beach is pretty cool. But, you know, till you've been to Panama City Beach or anywhere in the, really in the Florida Panhandle, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to beat this area. It really is. And so just kind of laying out some of the areas that I want to darken up on this thing to help separate this sign from itself. Add a little detail there. And... Uh, yeah, this thing is so cool. All right, we are now going to start bringing in some details. So I switched brushes to a, to a smaller brush. Not very much smaller. It's still a big brush. But now I'm going to be able to start throwing in some, uh, some more details into this. So I want to add some of the, some of the um, lighter areas. to the wooden beam. I'm going to concentrate on that for a while. Um, there we go. Parts of this beam, the light is popping. There, it's kind of hitting areas. So that's really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of adding in the highlights, um, little spots where the light's really popping on it. And then there's going to be much darker areas, which I'm about to do next, where it's almost just pitch black, and that's because the light is just totally being obscured by um, those. What do they call the vines? The little, the little vines. The uh, jasmine, the star jasmine. That's what it is. I remember stuff. Not very well, but I remember stuff. Y'all need to pray for Mrs. Gagno. She's uh, <laughs> she has to put up with me. And my spazziness that can never. Remember, poor thing had to had to come back from work to, to let me in the art studio because I forgot that my keys were at the uh, at the garage. So she was at work, and she asked me. She goes, "Where are your keys?" And I'm like, "Oh, they're in the thing." And da da da. da. And, and then, whoops! Hey, can you come back all the way back from work and give me the keys so I can get in the art studio so I can paint and I can do the vlog today? And she was like, Brr. "The woman is a saint." <laughs> And I'm adding in the really dark areas. I like to like go light, dark, light, dark, but I'm again, I'm still blocking in here. There's a long little window on the side. That's the window right here. This is the window that when there's a knock at the door, that's the one we peek through. <laughs> so we know like, who's that guy? Who's that guy at the door? All our kids are moved out, so we don't get a lot of company. And not a lot of people that show up to Ganyo House. Uh, the kids are... All the kids are grown, moved out, except for one. So, not a lot of knocks on the door. Not like it used to be. Right, so now I'm going to add just a little thing here, just to kind of thing. I'm going to use the pinky technique when you're trying to steady your hand. I don't have them all set because this is so loose. I'm going to put my pinky on just to steady it. There we 
go. The 103. The 103. I'd tell you the street name, but then I'd get stalkers. So. <laughs> I wish that was a joke. <laughs> I really wish it was a joke. A lot of wackadoos out there sometimes in this world. So. Again, the great thing about gouache is, is I can I can build these colors up. I can paint right over them. So I can put a light color on top of a dark color. So in that regard, it really does act like um, oils, you know, or, or an acrylic paint. But what's nice about it is that it, it dries super fast, which is nice. Um, but it also, I don't know, it, it, it's got that watercolor-like attributes to it, but it also has... Um, the ability to again paint dark you can paint light over dark which you can't do with with watercolor and so it's really neat that it's opaque and it gives me gives me a lot of freedom when I'm painting to, to try different things and uh, I really like that aspect of it not a lot of stores sell gouache anymore uh, you used to be able to get gouache at um, at least at my local Michaels, I used to be able to get it, um, but it's a lot more expensive uh, than watercolors, which is kind of a bummer. But so you know, there is a bit of an investment in it. But it's not—it's not like prohibitively uh, more expensive. And the only kind that they sell now at Michaels, at least at my Michaels. Now other Michaels, maybe maybe not your Michaels store might not, but. Um, at my local market, you can buy it in like elementary grade version, which is meh, you know. Um, I'm kind of a stickler when it comes to uh, painting. I want to have, you know, I like to use professional quality paints just because you can tell the difference instantaneously um, on, the, uh, on the way that they work. So I'm going to start putting this stuff on a little bit thicker now that... Um, it's time to start adding details. Uh, so that's really what I'm going to do now is just kind of increase, increase the uh, details. Just so things can really start to start to look right. The other cool thing about gouache that I really love is, um, now it's also a detriment. There are, there are, there are good sides and bad sides. Um, one of the things about gouache that can be problematic, um, and that, isn't that a fancy college word that, uh, that uh, has suddenly become a word? Wasn't a word before, but now it's a word, problematic. Um, anyway, uh, the only thing that can really kind of be a downside to gouache is that water will reactivate it <laughs> and so if I get this painting wet in any way it's going to reactivate the paint it won't stay dry um, whereas if I were to be using dry it's like forever it's forever dry so that that's something that um, you need to be aware of when you're working with with it is that is that it will reactivate if you're not uh, if you're not uh, careful so one of the things I do to avoid that is when I'm done my paintings, I will, um, I'll go in and um, spray it with, an, with a, like a workable adhesive or something um, just to, just to kind of seal it. And then that way it's, it's not going to get reactivated. If like, for example, if something happens, I spill, spill something on, on my uh, watercolor sketchbook or something like that. Um, I want it to uh, not do that, so how do I 
you know keep that from happening is I just I just seal it. Um, now um, Liquitex makes an acrylic gouache, which all it basically is is it's a it's a it's a matte. It dry, it's an acrylic paint that dries matte. That's all it is. It's nothing, you know, don't overthink that. That's all it is. And so that's kind of cool um, that they have that though, you know, that, that you can get, you know, you can get an, a, an acrylic gouache. So the benefit there is it'll never reactivate. It'll always stay, it'll always stay, um, you know, the way it is. So if you get the painting wet or something happens, See, this is what I was waiting for, guys. I don't know if you guys can see it. The light, it, the morning light is starting to get tall. And so the, um, the light is starting to hit the house in really cool ways. Like up here, I can see on my roof, there, there's areas of light that are starting to come in through, through the tree. There's a big crate myrtle. And so now I can start hitting those areas. That's what I was waiting for. I came out early and I knew that when I did my basic layout, that these things would start to appear right when I got to, you know, this stage in the painting, when I'm starting to add the details. And so I can start adding those sunlight spots that are peeking through uh, in my painting. So that, that, that's cool. Now some artists would have painted the background and then built around it. Um, James Gurney's really, really kind of famous for that. Um, I'm doing it just a little bit differently. But those lighting effects are gonna be cool, I think, in the painting, so. Neighbors are mowing their lawns and washing their cars. I need to get him to mow my lawn. That'd be great. Yeah. I got a good guy named Joe. He comes and mows my lawn, and uh, he is a really good guy. Love him to death. Good Christian brother. Comes and mows my lawn. Makes it look all pretty. We've been having so much rain, though, the poor guy hasn't been able to mow lawns <laughs> in, like, forever, I don't think. It's been a while. So, all right, now I can start like taking these river rocks and start to pop them in. Starting to look like something now. Just kind of add those things. Just more adding texture. I'm not, one of the things that, that I've learned over the years of painting is that you don't have to paint every little rock, every little crevice, you just need to imply some things sometimes and that's all you need to do people people will look at the painting and they'll kind of fill it in you know they, they can figure it out and so paintings don't always have to have like all this amazing detail you can really make it loose and make it simple and it, and it works really well so I'm gonna start adding the, um, the verbiage here just for fun I remember making this sign. The shoes here, love there sign. There we go. That'll work. I'll clean that up, tighten that up in a minute. Again, I'm still kind of laying things out in a little simplified way here. 
lot of a lot of uh, what I call young artists or artists that are just starting out. One of the things that they do that, in my opinion, is really really a mistake is they start with detail first, and then they and then they then they the problem when you when you work with detail first is if you make a mistake, it's really hard to fix. But if you start vague and loose, and then you tighten everything up. Uh, that will give you, you know, uh, you can fix things. Whereas, you start all tight, you're going to end up making mistakes that you really can't fix. So one of the things we're getting over here uh, at the Gagno Atelier is we are going to be going solar powered here. Uh, we had a solar power, we actually had two solar powered companies come out and talk to us and explain to us how it works and all that. And so we decided to go with, with a, a particular company. Uh, we picked the, the second company that, that, that came out to us and uh, they are going to be coming out and uh, we're going to get solar panels on the house. I'm pretty excited about it. So we're going to be we're going to be a solar powered uh, home and art studio, which I think is just great. So apparently, the way that works is is that um, when you get solar panels on your house, I guess it just it replaces your need for. The um, lost my train of thought. The neighbors are over there chit chatting. I caught my attention, but um, so I don't know if you guys saw right here. Um, this panel, I, I painted the um, the brass plate a little too long, and so I needed to make an adjustment. But with with gouache, because it's opaque, I painted this light creamy yellow color over the door, um, and I was able to just paint right over the. Um, right over the dark brass color because it's opaque. I can do that. If this was not that way, I wouldn't be able to do that. And so we're able to do some neat things with Bob. But anyway, I was telling you about the solar panels. So yeah, apparently the way it works is the um, you get the solar panels and they um, the the what the, what they cost you a month to get the solar panels? Uh, they they look at your your electric bill for like a couple weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, a couple months, and and they kind of get a gauge of how much wattage you use every month throughout the year, and then they do that, and then they calculate, okay, how many panels does your house need to uh, to get uh, the exact amount of wattage so that you're you're. You're not uh, doing over, but you're not doing under. You're doing exactly, you know, what you need. And so what's really neat about it is at that point, um, once your solar panels are doing what they're supposed to do, um, your electric bill should go down to nothing. Your, it makes your meter run backwards, apparently. And so that's kind of cool. And then um, at the end of the year, anything that you have actually because you're feeding the grid and so anything that, that goes back into the grid I guess at the end of the year the power company has to like write you a check or something like that so kind of neat kind of neat so we decided to go for it and uh, made the investment and so we're gonna be solar power to like saving the planet and stuff and uh, <laughs> anybody that knows me knows that that's like not really the you know I'm not like an environmentalist by any stretch of the imagination um, but um, you know, it's, it's good to do, so we try to take care of stuff and also going to save us some money, so it's a win-win, I think, for everybody. And hopefully we'll have, uh, we'll save some money and we'll have, uh, got to be good, good stewards. So that's what we're trying to do. Right now I'm trying to be a good steward and paint these window, these little panels on this door right. Ooh, it is hot out here, guys. Oh my gosh, you know, this is why I need a swimming pool. <laughs> uh, or the beach. And the problem is I can't go to the beach today. 
because my car's in the shop, so I can't leave the house. And so, but I'm actually, we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go out to, uh, we're going to Apalachicola, Florida. Uh, we're going to do that on, uh, we're going to do that tomorrow on Saturday. And we're going to, we're going to go snorkeling. We may get, we may uh, maybe get some scallops and we're going to go have dinner and stuff. And, um. With the Jeep work, and we're gonna we're gonna take that Jeep and we're gonna drive it uh, with the top down for the first time. We got a we got a new Jeep, and um, I have never taken the top off of it yet. So we're gonna take the top off. And we are gonna take it for a spin. So I'm excited about that. That's gonna be a good time. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I am having a good time. I don't. I, I'm hoping that the video is is working well. Um, unlike when I do the podcast, I can't see your comments when I use Mevo, which is kind of a bummer. So I have no idea if I'm having glitches or if I, if it's skipping or anything like that. So um, I guess we'll find out when I watch it again. And if that's a problem, then I'm going to have to start figuring out another way to do these do these remotes. Probably just do it straight from my phone. So we're doing an experiment today. That door is looking a little too yellow, so I'm going to try to tone it down a little bit. Put a little more gray in there. Just kind of gray it up just a little bit because it's a little too yellow. Again, that's the great thing about um, the gouache. I can go right over what I did. And if I lay it on translucently, just, just translucent, that yellow will still kind of peek through the color that I'm putting on. So it's almost like I'm toning it down. You guys probably can't see that, but it's definitely uh, definitely starting to look better. All right, so the door is just about done. The, the background, I want to really tone down because, again, this is going to be the focal point. So everything else I want to understate. I don't want too much detail. That, you know, sometimes we can get too um, exuberant in, our, in our, what we want to paint, and I don't want to do that. I want to keep this painting kind of simple. And so that's really what I'm what I'm looking to do here is just you know the old kiss technique keep it simple stupid. So I'm going to try to make a little dark color here, and I'm going to go in here and just throw some. laying in some panels the house has got like hardy board planks and it has it has brick so Just kind of implying them. I'm not putting a lot of lot of detail. They're barely the lines are barely there. I don't want to overstate anything. So that's what I'm doing here. All right. Then again, the, the sun, 
and this is working out great for me. The sun is making really cool things on these panels up here, uh, on the wall, the, the, through the trees. The sun is coming through the trees and doing some really cool things, so. on these shingles here. For those of you that are just now like checking it out and watching the video, we are painting, uh, we are plein air painting outside at my house uh, for various reasons. Uh, one of the main ones being uh, that, um, well, my car's in the shop and so we need to, uh, we can't go anywhere. <laughs> so, and uh, we took a break uh, from the Modern Masters podcast uh, to do some. Um, we did it. We, we pre-recorded one um, for this week, and so we're editing uh, some, some of the videos. And uh, you guys are going to absolutely love it. I've got an interview coming up. Um, we're going to be airing it in a couple weeks uh, with Frank Ordaz. And he, oh my gosh, you want to talk about meeting somebody that's like an instant, instant uh, friend, instant, uh, um, just just one of those people where you meet him and you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is like, I found some of my people. Um, what a what a what a what a wonderful man! Um, he actually, you guys are gonna freak out when you when you see this. I was geeking out the entire time. He um, this man worked on ET. He worked ET the extraterrestrial movie. He worked on uh, Star Trek: The Wrath of Khan. He worked on uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, he did uh, he did he did the skin. He painted the skin on the Death Star. No, no, I'm not even pulling your leg. He literally was the guy that painted the Death Star, the skin on the Death Star, among other things. He did, he did uh, matte paintings for movies and a bunch of other things when he worked uh, for uh, Industrial Light and Magic back when they were first, first, first really starting out. And so he uh, talks to us about his career and um, his life and, and all of his adventures and then he, he talks to us uh, he's going to uh, talk to us about um, you know where his career is now what kind of art he does he, he's an incredible incredible artist and so um, yeah you guys are going to absolutely love listening to my interview with, with uh, Mr. Frank Ordaz uh, I was blown away it was so cool so cool um, one of those moments where I was totally pinching myself. And then we have, um, I've been uh, in contact with a few other artists that I don't, I don't want to tell their names right away in case, in case I jinx it, but um, we've got some artists that are, that are, that are going to be coming on coming months. And I'm talking, you want to talk about geeking out. Uh, there's an artist that is coming on and, and I remember uh, both her and her husband were uh, artistic idols of mine when I was uh, in high school and just after high school um, these artists were absolutely um, you know art heroes uh, growing up and uh, she is going to be coming on and she is going to be doing an interview and uh, I am I'm geeking out <laughs> I am really got to be honest I'm, I'm totally nervous about it because like I said, this is this is this is an artist that is an absolute, no exaggeration, uh, art hero, uh, someone that I've admired and someone that I've looked up to, and was just attracted to the art 
style that uh, both her and her husband do and to the point of like you know wanting to just totally emulate them this shadow is getting really cool right here on the house the the roof is casting a shadow I want to put that in it's just creating a really cool angle on on the uh, on the pitch of the roof I've got a really interesting roof I've actually got like like one two three four five angles five different angles on the roof of my house which makes it really really neat um, but again that's the Sun that is coming across the house and it's creating very unique um, shadows uh, from the trees I've got two really big crepe myrtles I've got a um, a Florida maple and I've got six palm trees uh, in my yard and so here I'll zoom out so you can see what I'm talking about um, there you go and you can see all of these cool shadows in this area here that that's kind of what I'm working on right there just kind of laying them in and, and, and getting them to, uh, to to look good so here we'll do that so you can kind of see yeah, there we go. Yeah, well, you can see the painting and the shadows on the roof. Not the roof, the wall of the house. That's creating some really cool cast shadows on the roof and the, uh, the side of the house. So, I'm just having a great time. I hope you guys are too. This is, this is just fun. Look at that angle. Yeah, that's the angle. Actually, we made a little, little faux pas here. That's right there. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. I didn't bring this part of the roof down far enough. So now, there we go. That actually is correct. Always making adjustments. And again, with gouache, that's the beauty of it. I can make very quick adjustments to the painting if you make not an error but you know um, you're constantly making adjustments when you paint it's like a forever forever thing There's, it's a never-ending adjustment of what you what you what you had and what you're doing so go yeah that's correct I was noticing something wasn't right and that's what it was all right so aha just noticed something again you're always checking and rechecking this part of the window here this part of the window here I had my perspective wrong the brick is actually hiding that part of the frame. So let's see, we are one hour and four minutes in. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, again, this isn't your typical um, video where we are um, time lapsing it. Maybe I could, maybe I could take this video and I could turn it into a time lapse video. I could download it and speed it up. Um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go live and just have you guys join me and hang out and paint together because that sometimes is is a lot of fun. And you guys can see my process. You guys can say, "Oh wow, Tim, you're totally doing it wrong," or "Oh wow, Tim, that's cool. I didn't didn't think to do it that way." So.
again we're getting some bright spots so I'm going to add those into the bricks here sunlight coming through doing some neat things the bricks on my house it's like I can't I can't explain they got like paint on them I don't know what what you call that but it's like a someone took a trowel and just like painted like scraped across the bricks so that there there's a lot of like even though they're bricks there's there there's more like white bricks than there are um, than there are uh, brown reddish bricks I mean there's a lot of red bricks but there's a lot of like white like scrubbed washed type of a thing on, on a lot of these bricks so I'm just going to imply that by scraping along I'm taking my brush and I'm just kind of holding it like parallel and scrape, scraping it to imply that I don't want to paint every brick that would be that would be just counterproductive for what I'm doing because remember this the the, uh, the jasmine is really what I want to show so I'm just this this is all peripheral uh, things so I'm gonna just show that with some uh, some very light markings to give it that texture it's almost like a dry brush scraping across that got some bricks here I'm going to do the same thing and some there just gives us a hint of brick that's all I'm doing okay clean my brush I need to go back out to Hamiltonville Farms uh, to my friends Hank and Gina uh, I go to church with them, and they have a YouTube channel called Hamiltonville, Hamiltonville Farm, and uh, they um, have a YouTube channel. Oh my gosh, you got to check out their YouTube channel. They've got about, um, oh my gosh, I think it's like 70,000 or something like that uh, subscribers on YouTube, and basically Hank plays on his tractor. That's that's what he does. He, he plays on his tractor, and they they, they do things on their on their. Uh, they've got a little homestead farm that they've been doing for a couple years now, and uh, they they've built it, and it's just gorgeous out there. But um, yeah, they've got this great great YouTube channel. It's super fun to watch. I watch it all the time. I binge watch it when I'm painting, um, and so it makes it makes makes for fun. All right, so now we're going to start doing this crepe myrtle. I'm not not crepe myrtle. Um, the um, jasmine we're going to start throwing that in so getting getting these plants in so I'm just kind of at first I'm going to throw in some dark color I'm going to throw in as dark a color as I get almost a black so for my black what I'm doing is I'm taking um, some burnt umber and some um, ultramarine blue and I'm making a black that way um, and I'm just going to kind of throw in the plants there's a big plant right here it's a fern right there so I'm going to kind of put that in again right now I'm just because I can paint dark over I mean a light over dark that's really what I'm concentrating on uh, I'm not concentrating on um, trying to get it right I'm going to build up my colors as needed and so I'm coming in here and I'm looking where the plants are. And I'm just going to kind of drop in some, some dark. And then over that I'll be able to put the greens and, 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 and the other foliage. So I'm just kind of plopping in the, uh, the trees and the foliage because by, and I'm just really scraping. I'm just kind of giving it a very textury look for now. Got a lot of plants over here in this area. I don't know what those little white fluffy ones are called. My wife knows. Women know about these things. I'm a dude and I'm like, I don't know, it's white. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing. I'm laying that, I'm laying that foliage into into the uh, into the foreground, into the background, and then over this, I can come in and 
and I can add the greens and stuff um, as we go and they'll, and they'll pop more they'll, they'll, they'll sit on top of it a little bit better gives me something to work with there's a lot of plant on that one side in there this one uh, the right side man it is just it's growing like a weed yeah <laughs> but it's not a weed it's a it's a uh, uh, star jasmine that's what it's star jasmine I've only said it like eight times, and I still can't remember what the heck's called. <laughs> but this thing is, uh, we are quite proud of it, because it is just like everywhere. It's growing like crazy. It's climbing up the roof. You can see here, I love that. It's just like taking over the house, but we're going to train it. What's cool is you can kind of like train the vines, and you can kind of get them to go where you want, which is really fun. And so that's kind of what... What we're trying to do is train this particular one to kind of go up and around and then back down. So we have one on this side, one on this side. And so we're going to... We're going to get them to wrap around totally and... Uh, hopefully they'll start to... Eventually it'll be just this nice smooth thing and the one on the right side is a newer one it was actually a Mother's Day present a couple years ago um, and then we've been in this house about five years and so the, the one on the right's been it's about five years old but the second one is about maybe two years old I think so it's not as uh, it's not as uh, uh, big and grown yet but it's getting there it's getting there you can already see by putting that plant there how it's attracting the eye to, uh, to to what I want you to look at. All right, so that's the dark. Now what I'm going to do? Actually, oh, I just realized a spot that I need to work on. You can see the panels in the shadow here. If you look here in the house you can see you can see you can still see the panels so I need to put those panels in the shadow so I'm just gonna take a darker color here and I'm gonna there we go today man just that simple nothing nothing overdo it just so we can see what's going on. Okay. I'm going to add a, one little area of shadow here where this um, where the gutter is right up against the house. It's, it's got a little bit of shadow there. So awesome. It's starting to look like something now. All right, now I'm going to do the fun part. This is where the, this is where it's really going to start to pop, guys. When I start adding the colors onto the um, onto the foliage, so I'm going to take this big this big brush right here. Look at that thing. This is a really old, beat up, soft watercolor brush, and so I'm going to use that thing, this thing here, and I'm going to be like tap 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 on these. I don't know if you guys can see them. Let me see them right there. Those like white flowers. I want to do some of those first uh, before I do the greens, um, just so you guys can see it. So here we go. So I'm going to take just a little bit of water. I almost want to do this dry brush. Very little water on my brush. And these things have like a, almost like a bluish to them. So I'm going to put a little tiny bit of blue, just a little bit, not a lot, just a, the tiniest bit of blue into this and here we go watch down here okay I come in here and I'm just gonna here we go and it's starting to pop
it's a little too strong so I'm going to put a little gray in it yeah there we go some areas are you know shaded so I want to make sure that they're not totally I don't want it to be like white you know I want it to be little areas of subtlety too especially the ones back here one of the things you really got to pay attention when you're doing art like this is you want to make sure that you know the light is casting so some parts of these trees these little foliage things down here on the bottom the lights hitting them directly so they're bright but other parts they are in they're in a giant shadow that is being cast if you look at this shadow on the on the ground from the tree you see the shadow right here the, the, the shadowing here that's from the big giant um, Florida maple that I've got um, and it is gorgeous you know, maple trees everywhere I didn't know that there were maple trees in Florida I had no idea um, so anyway I'm pretty pretty happy about this I got I got maple trees that remind me of home and then you know when I was a kid growing up in New Hampshire my you guys are gonna love this story um, you had to wait a while to get to get to get a Tim story but here we go here's a Tim story uh, you know, when I was a kid growing up, my, my grandfather, he, they did the snowbird thing. My grandfather, my grandmother, they did the snowbird thing in, uh, in Mims, Florida. And they would come back, you know, in May every year. They, they, they'd spend the whole winter down in Florida, and they'd come back home in, in, in May. And they would sit there, and they would tell us stories about Florida, you know. And I remember just like it was the highlight of the year when when when, when Mimer and Pepper would come back from Florida, they would come bearing gifts, and it's so funny. My mother would always get a present from my grandfather. He would get her. It's it's a touristy thing in Florida. Uh, it's called a it's called canned air. It's Florida sunshine in a can, and she would they would do this big ceremony at the house because Pepper was back, and he would bring the Florida sunshine back to northern New Hampshire because it was you know cold and all that, and so. They would, um, she would unopen, she'd open her can of air, of her Florida sunshine, and then that meant the snow would be done. It'd be done. Winter's done, and the, the good weather's going to start to come, because Pepper brought it back. And so that, that's kind of a fun little story there. But the, um, when I was a kid, he would tell us stories about Florida, and he would tell me about, you know, I was a little boy, so he would tell me, oh, Timmy, there's lizards, and there's all these things, and, and I would be like, oh, my gosh, and I thought these lizards would be like, you know, 10 feet long, and they're practically like dinosaurs and stuff, and uh, he would, and uh, now I know they're these little tiny baby chameleons that we have all around here, but um, growing up, if you would have told me that one day six palm trees in my front yard, I would have told you, you're crazy, you're crazy, so I get a big kick out of my out of my palm trees in my front yard. It's like, I've got palm trees. I've got six palm trees in my front yard. And a lot of people down here have palm trees, you know? It's like not that big a deal, but for me, it's like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty big deal. I just, you know, it's, it's a big thing. And hundreds of hundreds of little chameleon lizards running around and geckos and different things. And so, yeah, it's pretty pretty big deal, pretty big deal. This, this New Hampshire boy, he's got palm trees, so. I say that till I have to climb up on a on a 30 foot ladder and trim the branch trim the branches off. Then I'm like, oh, these stupid palm trees. But um, my wife's gonna have to tell me what the heck these kind of plants are called because I can't for the life of me remember what they're called. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go into the greens for the jasmine. Hey guys, I really hope you're having a good time. I hope this video is coming out. Um, I've had trouble in the past with my Mevo camera where it would like bog down or it'll pixelate really bad. And so I have no idea if this video is coming out. If it doesn't, um, yeah, I apologize. But hopefully, hopefully we're going to have some, some good video to, to share. Okay, so first I'm going to add some of the dark green. I'm using a really dark green here. Um, just because again I want to create I want to create depth in the painting in the in the foliage and so even though I put like a black down it's like a bluish black um, really dark green and um, that's just gonna add depth all I'm doing is I'm adding depth with it. And 
and I can start adding leaves and, and vines that are crawling and things like that. And then over that, I can add my lighter color. Nope. And looking at this, I see something here that I need to adjust. I got a little overzealous with my um, planting of the, of the plants. I can actually see that number three. So I want to paint that number three back. There we go. I don't want that to be hidden. So again, nothing fancy here and the rose bushes. These are some really cool rose bushes too. They get like like magenta in their color. So I actually got some magenta for when I do the rose bushes because they're they're really bright. It's starting to attract attention. There's people that are driving by and rubbernecking. They're rubbernecking. What is that dude doing in the middle of his yard with a paintbrush and a thing? And they're all freaked out and confused. Whew. Thank God for the shade of my maple tree because I would be just dying right now. It is insane land hot. All right, so now I'm going into a different shade of green. This is a much, much brighter green. This is like a viridian. And this making those marks in there to really kind of, I'm going to tone this down with a little bit of gray, just because even though it's a bright green, it, it's not going to, it shouldn't be that, it shouldn't be like, you know, um, shouldn't be green. Um, if you look at a leaf, they're actually kind of muted. So I want to mute this just a little bit. That's almost... So I'm basically... Um, when you add gray to a color, you're doing what's called toning it. Um, if you add white, you're tinting. If you add gray, you're toning. And if you add uh, black, you're shading a color. So I want to tone this color down. I want to... I want to um, add gray to it. So that's all I'm doing. It's, just, it's still going to look green. As you can see, it's still green, but it's a toned down, more muted um, green, which is actually much more accurate on these leaves, especially on the far end of those um, rose bushes. I'm going to start adding. My toes must be delicious, and I'm going to have so many fire ant bites on me, it is not even funny. I must be standing in the wrong spot. I can't see any fire ant pit around me, but yeah, they're, they're, they're finding me. They're finding me. I'm going to regret this later. Oh yeah, this is starting to look fantastic. I'm going to gradually start to um, bring bring this, get a smaller brush too. I'm still, I'm still just kind of adding in the subtle little things. I'm not trying to get uh, too wild here. Just a few little marks here and there. I'm still filling in the thicker areas of this um, of this composition. Hopefully the wife will like this painting. Maybe we can hang it up. I actually don't have a lot of my paintings hanging in my house, which is kind of funny. You know, you guys know I paint a lot of biblical narrative paintings, so those don't, that's not something you want to hang up in your kitchen, you know what I mean? Um, and so um, we have one painting of mine. Well, it's actually ours. We did it together. Uh, she likes to do paint pours, and um, so she did, a, she did a paint pour, and it just it looked 
like the ocean. And I said, oh man, we need to do a paint pour and I'll paint some fish over it. So we did, uh, she did a paint pour and then I did, uh, I did a fish over it. And then uh, I'm making a gaming table and we made a map of uh, my uh, son and I, we like to, we like to play uh, role playing games. Uh, with our friends and so we made a map like I made like this gigantic m table uh, that we play on when we play our game with our friends and um, we made a table with the map of like our world that we play in and um, what we did was uh, she's going to do a paint pour for all the oceans and then we'll put our map over that and that'll look really cool I'm excited about that so So much going on. All right, so now I'm going to go into, I'm gonna get my smallest brush that I have now. It's a little tiny, little tiny brush. What I call the pointy brush. It's actually called a round. But I'm gonna start putting in the vines. There's some vines in They're really tiny, but there's a lot of them. Hope you guys are enjoying hanging out with me. On the outside of the Gagne Atelier, now you know what the outside of the Gagne Atelier looks like. How fun is that? Huh? And when this is done, I'll take a photo of it and I'll post the photo so you guys can get a you know good look at it up close. It's actually a very loose, very light painting. This this I got, we got these. There's this ones right here that it's like. The vine from this one and this one are met, but they've met down, and so we have to like duck down under it. So I need to, we need to like uh, take that apart and and retrain them. So we're gonna we're gonna do that probably this weekend or next. But these vines are getting literally everywhere. Which is great. But they, it's like they reach out. They like stretch out. And they find something. They grab it. And then they just wrap, 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 wrap around it. So it's, it's really crazy. Um, it's like, what's that? What's that? What's that bad guy in the Batman movies? The girl that does the vines? Um... Poison ivy, yeah, the, 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 plant, the plant bad guy. Like her little vines are always reaching out. This thing is just like, it's trying to like take over the house. And so you have to tame it and you have to um, like train the leaves. Like, no, no, go over here. No, I want you to go over there. No, 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 not there. You know, it's like a constant battle, which is kind of cool. And yeah, now this painting is starting to really, really come together. Let me move that up for you guys. This is what we're talking about, how you tighten up. You don't, you don't get, you don't start tight and, and start loosening. You, you start loose and you get, and you get tighter, tighter, tighter. And that's really kind of what, what we're doing. I need to spray this down. So I got my little water bottle here. You guys can see that and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the gouache and that's gonna it's starting to dry out you just you just give it a little squirt and that will reactivate it enough where it stays wet and I can I can get in here and I can paint some more so now it's when we're gonna do all these little these are the individual ones that the light is just like popping on they're really like boom There's actually quite a lot of them in certain areas where the light's really hitting bright. 
and in other areas, not at all. solar panel company truck just drove by he's the whole neighborhood's getting solar power panel around he seems like everybody's getting into the act so we were actually the third or fourth house in the neighborhood um, that went solar so that's kind of neat hopefully to work out because it was not cheap <laughs> But again, if it, if it does what it's supposed to do, the, the, the payment for the solar panels will be actually less than what I was paying the electric company every month. And if I'm not going to have to pay the electric company anymore, it, it evens out. So that's kind of cool. I, think, I just think that's, that, that's really neat. And hopefully it uh, functions as advertised. That's all I got to say. <laughs> guess we're, I guess I'll find out. Now, most of my neighbors that have had it for a while, they, they do say that it does. So that's... Uh, that was part of the part of the nice thing of having people around here that have it already. We were able to check and and do that. Whew. Using a tiny brush to do all these little tiny leaves that are just catching the light they're popping now a neat thing about gouache too is that it does dry it dry whoops sorry guys I hit the camera um, it tends to dry much darker than um, it is when it's wet so it dries a couple shades darker so what looks to be like really like whoa that's that's too much it's actually it's going to tone down in certain areas it will now, I can make it more but for the most part It will. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but we've got ourselves a bald eagle uh, flying over our heads. That's cool. And uh, we've got we've got a uh, family of bald eagles, and we have a um, family of ospreys, and they are constantly flying over our house, and they just talk to each other and sing and all that. I feel like Bob Ross talking about his pet squirrel. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. You're out here and you see a bald eagle. When there's a bald eagle flying over your house, that just, I don't know why, it just, you know, it's just like you're like America, you know? <laughs> Whoa, that's a. I am being harassed by a yellow fly because I'm delicious. Let's see, is that a. Nope, that's a hornet. I'm not worried about a hornet. <laughs> Down here in Florida, I, I don't know if you where, where you live, but uh, we're more afraid of yellow flies than we are hornets and wasps. The yellow flies are mean. They will chew you to pieces. Oh, I'm doing my podcast in plein air painting. I'm uh, plein air painting. I'm painting the painting a picture of the house. Yeah, I'm doing my podcast. Oh, that's a painting. Yeah, that's a painting. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do in the garage all day. I've converted it into an art studio. It's all enclosed. There's a wall behind the garage door. Oh no, it's fine. It's it's totally fine. Uh, that's awesome. I yeah. Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after the podcast, I'll have you come over and you can check it out. I'll show it off to you. Oh yeah, yeah. I teach classes in here and everything. Yeah, you can. You,
Yeah. And they, and they were like me. They were like, I can't paint anything, dude, but I'm telling you. They're like, oh, you can learn. Anybody can learn to paint. But I'll keep that in mind, man. That's really awesome. Yeah. I just, it's been confusing me all morning. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you take care. That's cool. He's a good neighbor. Yeah, that's my neighbor. He was uh, confused as to what I was doing all morning. <laughs> You guys know what I was doing because you were tuning in. I appreciate you guys watching and hopefully this will inspire some of you guys to paint. And yes, we do. We Right out of that garage, we have the Gagno Atelier. Um, we have a beautiful 400 square foot studio. When If you watch the podcast, you'll actually see it every week behind me. Um, I need to do a tour. Maybe next week. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to plein air paint down at the Hathaway Bridge in the water or if uh, maybe we'll do a uh, studio tour. So maybe I'll ask and you guys can chime in and tell me what you would rather see. Uh, some more plein air painting or uh, if you would rather uh, get a studio tour. Maybe we could do both. You know what, we'll probably just do both. I'll do a studio tour um, and I'll have to clean it first. My goodness, will I have to clean it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. We'll do that. We'll do a, um, we'll do a studio tour and we will do a... Um, yeah, studio tour slash and a Hathaway Bridge painting because the Hathaway Bridge is like this beautiful, beautiful bridge that we have here uh, in Panama City. Uh, it connects Panama City to Panama City Beach, and so I think that that would be a great painting to do. Um, yeah, that would be that would be a blast. Let's do that. Let's do that. We're going to paint the Hathaway Bridge next week. And uh, maybe in a couple hours we'll do it. We'll do a, a quick studio tour of uh, my art studio, so you can see like how we do it and where we do everything that we do, and uh, kind of give you a behind-the-scenes thing. I think that'll be fun. Why not, right? So what I've done is I've added just a little bit of white to the green. And what that does, it kind of, for lack of a better word, it minties it up. It makes it look like more minty. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, brown to it just to tone that green down because um, it's a reddish brown. And so red red and brown, I'm, I'm sorry, red and green are opposites on the color wheel. So they actually tone each other down, but they can also, because this is such a, this is like a mint color, it will um, brighten it up too. It'll, it'll lighten it, but it'll still be, it'll still be a little toned down, which will be good. So it's got a little bit of white in it, green and a little bit of the red. And that's just to give me a light, muted green, light, poppy areas where the light is really hitting these, these plants. Certain of these plants are just I want to add those rose bushes now. So I'm going to add, I'm going to go into straight magenta here because these flowers are really bright. And this will be my base. I'm just going to throw in just a few a little flowers. There's some over here. And I'll add some shading to them. There we go. And last I'm going to kind of come in and just 
get some, just to pull some things, make them a little more dramatic. There's some shadows being cast. By the plant now. Onto the uh, tool. So I'm going to just show that. All right, guys, I am going to call that this one done. Just a simple, quick plein air painting. Um, nothing fancy. Um, just a nice little fun, quick study. Uh, artists do these things. This is where, basically, this is a way for me to relax. This is a way for me to hone my, um, my skills on sight size, uh, you know, and my painting, you know, being able to paint and draw what I see. And so that's really what I'm doing. If we were going to turn this into a, um, you know, if I was going to paint this like a big serious painting, um, I would use this as a reference. And so, but here we are, um, all done. And so I am going to do this. Let me do this. I'm going to put this on the ground. I'm going to bring the camera around closer and maybe you guys can get a better look at it. There we go. That'll work. And so that is our painting of The house. All right, guys. So uh, <laughs> let me back up so you can see me. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, again, if you are are enjoying uh, the Gagno Atelier and all of our programs that we have, uh, the birds are cheering. They're pretty excited about it. Um, but I would love it if you could uh, like our Gagno Atelier Facebook page. But also if you could go over to the Gagno Atelier. YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button for me. I would really appreciate that. We're trying to really grow our, our, our presence on YouTube. So if you could give us a uh, give us a subscribe over there, it would really be appreciated. Uh, with that said, guys, just remember, 